camera right then. So, first we'll look at a setup. Yeah. You can see on the left hand side, kind of your before, it just looks to me like you're in a full shot. Yeah. yeah. So you're setting up now to hit this roughly the sort of 75 ish yard you said you would hit it. And that is obviously a full shot setup. So you've got four width of stance, ball position is kind of just sort of left to centre there. Yeah. Everything looks full. Yeah. And because of this, now if you just watch this swing in speed, as you go back, it looks a bit kind of like whoop, and there's that sort of recoil yeah. back. Your arms look very tense and very sort of rigid and stiff when you're playing this shot, okay? So the wrist hinge on the way back isn't a problem, but as you come through here, now everything's sort of stopped and your arms are very locked, okay? So yeah. there's not really much kind of pivot with the body. It's more just like, I'll use my arms and just try and waft at it somewhere and basically hope for the best, wasn't it? So, mm. so this setup here now, we've got narrower stance. We've put this left foot back a little bit. We're not opening up our stance. We're just bringing this foot back. And then we're putting a bit more weight on that front foot. And if you actually look at where kind of your, your body looks oh, situated okay. there, <laughs> you are kind of leaning onto that left side a little yeah. bit, which is fine, okay? We want to stay there, help get a good angle of attack, okay? As the club goes back now, a little bit of body tension, so the knees and the lower half sort of move in there now. As we come through, we can kind of turn through the ball and twist through. And in terms of rhythm and speed with this shot, if we watch the speed now, yeah, yeah. You, just, you just turn through the ball and it just looks a lot looser the club looks a yeah. lot lighter in your hands in comparison arguably yes that's maybe a little bit too far that would be sufficient but you go a bit further than you're used to just because now by loosening up that grip pressure you've kind of released your arms to be able to go further whereas yeah. before they were very rigid and very stiff and just <laughs> didn't really yeah. want to go anywhere and that was just like the fear of going too far yeah, yeah. so we so soften up those arms and that grip pressure narrow the stance Bring the left foot back just a little bit, as we said. Keep that weight on the front foot. Now the swing thought now just to get a bit more of a pivot with the body. So your body now and the arms are kind of working together, striking that ball as you went. If you start getting a more consistent strike at least, and you go, okay, if I swing the golf club back to here, it'll go 25 yards. If I swing it to here, it'll go 15 yards. If I swing it kind of up here, it's 30 yards or whatever yeah. it may be. You'll just kind of learn these different kind of checkpoints. So if that's kind of like, was your lob wedge you were playing the shot with. Yeah. This middle line here, so if I think the red line here now was about sort of 25, 30 yard shot, this would probably equate to maybe 40, 45 yards. This would be kind of 15, 20 yards. Now, if you do the same swing then with a 9 9, so 9 9 going here would probably be about 45 yards, up there would be about 60 yards, and down there would be about 20 yards, yeah? yeah. So a different club will give you a different distance yeah. and a different trajectory to how the high ball goes off the club face and a different reaction to the ground. If there's something in the way and you need height that comes down softer, you need the lob wedge or your sand down. There's nothing in the way we can play it lower and it can run more, then we take more of a lesser lofty club yeah. like your eight, your nine, your wedge. But that's all based around what you see in front. So the situation on the screen now, if you had this shot here now, it's very similar to kind of the first on the button, just a clear run up. You could eight or a nine, I just basically trundle on the ground, yeah? If your golf ball's over here, and there's a bunker in the way, you've now got to go over that bunker, yeah? So depending on what shot you have in front of you will determine what sort of club you choose. And generally speaking, not always the case, because rough like can make a bit of adjustment with this, the less loft you have in your hands, the easier the shot's going to be and the bigger the margin of error, okay? Because if you have an a 8 or a 9 iron, the swing length is so short, relative, if you do catch it mid-ball, it will go sort of 10 or 15 yards past. If you have mid ball with a sand dime being a longer swing, it's like 30 yards and still going, yeah. yeah? So the less loft as you can have in your hands, weight is on the left side, just basically almost like just kicking on the ground. You think about these shots, it's almost like basic 101 with like kids' football, like the first thing, when you're passing the ball, keep it on the ground, yeah? A ball on the ground is far easier to control than one up in the air. So loose grip and the setup change you've got there now. Now your pivot's going to be a lot smaller, but it's still going to move. There you go. Lands on the front part of the green and releases up. Now, again, it's always tough to judge in here on a 2D screen kind of thing. Out there, I think you have a bit more of an adjustment with that. But you can get the idea the strike was what you were looking for. The connection was decent. We've just got to just shorten that swing now for the next one. So the last one went sort of 45 yards, but it only landed 15. So it did about one third land and then two thirds roll, yeah? Yeah. That makes sense then, yes? So yeah. quick summary, narrow stance, yeah. foot back, weight left. That's your kind of setup changes, okay? Oh, and loose grip. Those four things there, you sort of just go through there as you stood next to the golf ball. As you're stood by the ball, it's more of the body and the pivot of the torso you've got to use. There you go. So we're using the body, yeah. not just trying to stop using the wrist and then flicking it anyway, yeah? If the arms stop and the body stops, that club's going to just carry on through, yeah? And yeah. you will flick it. So by trying to stop flicking it, you actually encourage flicking it more, yeah? yeah. That's, the, that's the difficulty. The more you try, the worse it gets. So you're trying harder and you get tighter. Gripping tighter makes your body work less. Yeah. And you're not trying to get it. It's just a vicious spiral. Of, and then you get to a stage where I can't chip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Make sense? Yeah. Good man, right?